Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So I have shown you guys um, how I make the standard beach coasters. And today I'm gonna show you how I do the beach coasters for the beach car coasters. Good gracious. Okay, so I actually, these are like a really popular item on my Etsy shop. And I offer three different sizes. These are the standard sizes. And then these are my large. And then I have an extra large that doesn't sell often. So I, I rarely make that one. Today, we're going to focus on restocking my inventory for the standard car coasters and the large ones. And I'm going to show you guys how I do it. I do have a my other beach video <clears throat> for coasters. Um, I have changed... Uh, my method and how I do it slightly. So this is currently how I make my beach coasters. I hope you guys enjoy the video. So the very first thing that I do is I will use some shipping tape and I will come in and clean um, each of these molds just to make sure that there's no particles in there, there's no hairs uh, or anything like that that's going to get mixed in with the resin. Next, I'm gonna mix my resin. I have several of these uh, silicone type measuring cups, but I always have such a hard time using these. Uh, most of them, you can't really read the measurements on the side. This one you can. Um, and then after you use it, you have all of this extra excess in there. You can easily peel it out, but not all of it comes out. And then sometimes when you <clears throat> mix your new resin in there, you get these little tiny particles in your resin, and I don't like that. So what I have been doing is I, I get these um, clear measuring cups. This one's a large one, of course. This one goes up to 20 ounces. If you're only doing one set, you definitely do not need a measuring cup this big, but I love these because I use them once. I can clearly see my measurements on the side, and then after I'm done, I let it sit and harden, and then I throw it away. So I know it's a lot of waste, um, but that's what works easiest for me. So I'm gonna go and mix my resin. I have my resin mixed and I'm letting it sit for just a couple of minutes so that any bubbles can pop up to the surface. I am gonna focus on the sand. So I choose to use craft sand and I purchased it off of Amazon because I don't wanna use real beach sand since it has so much bacteria and so many other things in there that you just don't know what lives in that sand. So I use craft sand. I do, if you notice, there's a little bit of shimmer in there. So I mix craft sand with this amazing glitter. This is my favorite beach glitter. It looks just like sand and it's called Seaside from Glitzy Glitter Express. If you guys make crafts um, with a beach theme, I highly recommend this glitter. So I will mix that with my craft sand uh, just to give it a little bit of shimmer when it's in in my products you see that how cool um then i have my sand in a cup and i am going to add resin in there mix it up so it's more of like an oatmeal consistency this is the consistency that you want you don't want too much resin in there because then the resin will kind of separate from the sand and then you want enough resin in there to where you can easily spread the sand so once we get that mixed, we are going to add it to the bottom of our car coasters. So car coasters have this little divot in here. So when it's in your cup holder, you can stick your finger in there and pull it out. We're gonna put the sand on the bottom of these. I'm going to start working on the ocean. I use two different colors of blue. And guys, I use acrylic paint. There are other crafters out there that say um, you can't mix acrylic paint with resin because it won't cure correctly. That is absolutely incorrect. I have been doing this method for over a year now and have had absolutely no issues. However, the key is a very small amount of paint in your resin. The more paint you have, the more issues you are going to run into. So. I have my resin and all I do, this is actually from Hobby Lobby. It was $3.69. Um, 
So it's very inexpensive and I'm using a really dark blue. You can use any brand of acry acrylic paint. Um, it does not matter, but I am just gonna do probably about that much. We're gonna mix this and see um, how translucent that is. But look at that, just that small amount. You wanna make sure that you mix it extremely well so that you don't have um, paint particles in there, if that makes any sense at all. But look at that beautiful blue. Um, you could add just a little bit more to make it a little more darker so it's not so translucent. You can see it's a little translucent there. So I'm just gonna add just a little bit more. Start with less, then you can add more. And I would not do any more than that. And it mixes really well with resin. I have not had any issues with this at all. If you want it to have a little bit of a, like a shimmer effect, um, you can add some blue mica powder in there and it will give it a shimmer. Most of my clients, believe it or not, don't like that. They like it to be more matte. So that's what I have started using. Once you have that mixed really well, make sure you get your sides. Then <clears throat> I use these little um, cups here and I get these at my like Walmart or, or wherever. And the reason why I like these so much is because I can bend them. And then I have a little more control of my resin. So you can pour it straight out or use your um, stirring stick. But you're gonna put just a little bit right here at the top. Just like that. So I'm gonna fill these and be right back. Now we're gonna do the more turquoise type color. I want my coasters to give the feel of um, an exotic beach. So I use ocean green um, acrylic paint. Honestly, you can use any color that you want. You can even do like a sunset type beach as if you didn't wanna use that dark blue, and then I'm gonna mix that in to my cup of resin right here. And we are going to fill in these spaces. Don't need a lot, just enough to fill in that space. And we are not filling this all the way to the top of the mold. This is going to be our first layer. Um, and then we're gonna come back in after it has cured for a little time and add a top layer. And the reason why is because we want the beach waves to look as realistic as possible. Um, so once we add the waves, if we added more resin to fill this to the top, it would um, mix in your waves with your ocean and that's what you do not want to happen. So I'm gonna share my little secret, secret <laughs> on beach waves and how I get them as realistic as possible. Now it's time for my waves. I'm gonna take some resin and I'm going to use white acrylic paint. And my secret is treadmill belt lubricant. You guys, there is no reason to buy any kind of special products for your waves. This works wonders. I purchased this almost two years ago and I'm still, I've only used a fourth of it. This is gonna last you an extremely long time because all you need is a couple of drops. The reason why I use this is because it helps to make those cells in your waves, which give it that more realistic look. So we're just gonna mix this up really good. And you want it to be a dark white like that. All right, I'm just gonna take my stir stick and place a little bit right here on the sand. Well, it's right where the sand meets your teal blue. Like that. After we have that, we take a heat gun and we're gonna blow the waves out.
Now it's time for shells. I will add a starfish to one and then smaller shells to the other. These starfish I get from Amazon. Um, of course, some of them are broken, so I can't use them. And then we're just going to place those right on the sand. I can never find shells small enough to go in my coasters. So I actually go to the North Carolina beaches, which are close to me, and I hand pick these baby shells. And this is what I use for the second coaster. Shells have been placed. And now we wait for an hour or two for it to cure and we will come back and put a top final coat on these beauties. I have already put the final layer on here and if you see any bubbles or have any bubbles, you can take a torch and pop the bubbles. Um, the heat from the torch is what pops those bubbles, but you do want to be careful to not keep your torch or the heat on the coaster too long because if you do, your coaster mold might uh, melt to your resin. So you only want it on there for like, a split second. And we're gonna let these set overnight, <clears throat> 24 hours, and then we will be able to demold them. I do use these little tents to cover up my projects. These are food tents. And they are absolutely amazing. So it keeps any particles or bugs or flies or anything from leaning into your projects as it's curing. These are absolutely wonderful. So we will come back and check on these tomorrow. Guys, don't hate me. I already took these out of the molds um, <clears throat> and forgot to record everything. So I kind of stuck them back in here so you can kind of see um, what they would have looked like. Uh, after they have cured for like 24 hours, they are ready to remove from the molds. Um, what I usually do is these little edges here, I will just sand um, with, I think it's 220 grit. Uh, but you do have to be careful when sanding because you can scratch the coaster itself. And if you do that, uh, then you can't necessarily sell it. So I, I come on the edges and I'll sand these. Some of these I might have to sand completely down um, or add like a dome, a top layer of resin on top of these. So like some of these, like this one, um, it has a couple of bubbles that pop, so it, it has an indent there. So for this one, what I would do is sand the entire top and then I will put just a little thin layer of resin on top and let that recure, and it will be perfectly fine. Um, same thing with this one. And also, my husband was helping me sand these and scratched it a little bit. I don't know if you can see that, but that's what it looks like if you accidentally scratch it while sanding. If you do that, sand the entire piece and then put just a top layer of resin on it, let that recure, and you should be fine. You won't be able to see those those scratches on there. But I hope this helped. Um, they are absolutely gorgeous and a really top seller of mine. If you have any questions, let me know below. Don't forget to subscribe, of course, and um, I'll catch you on the next video. Thanks for watching.